Just to recap on conventional fencing, remember when we have an energizer, we have our positive terminal, and we have our negative terminal. Every time the energizer pulses, the current flows down their line. When an animal touches the fence, the circuit is closed through the animal back to the air spikes. The problem came in when we had dry ground. When the ground is dry, getting the circuit back through the ground is a challenge. So what we had there is we then had the positive wire and we took a negative wire that ran parallel on the fence line. Positive pulse down the fence, a zero pulse. So here we'd have plus 10,000 volts and here we had zero volts. When the animal touched, if he touched just the ground, you'd have a weak circuit back. If he touched across the two, you'd have a 10,000 volt shock between the positive and the zero. With bipolar, we have something unique. You have three terminals. You have your half power, your full power, and your earth. What we do here is we take our half power and we put that towards the ground. Full power goes out and earth goes out. What we now achieve is we actually achieve a half power positive pulse on the original positive. So that will be 5,000 volts positive. And on the negative line, we have a negative shape pulse minus 5,000 volts. What now happens is an animal touching the 5,000 volts positive only will receive a 5,000 volt shock through the ground. And touching the negative 5,000 volts, it will also only achieve a 5,000 volt shock through the ground. Remember, the potential difference can be positive or negative because voltage is just a potential difference between zero and whatever voltage is on the fence. If the animal, though, were to touch both fences, it would achieve a difference between 5,000 positive and 5,000 negative. It will receive a 10,000 volt shock, getting the full Monty between the two wires. Recap on security fencing. We have a security energizer, which has a live out terminal, which loops back to the live return. And then we have a negative out, which can also be wired in a series circuit, looping back to the energizer. Every time the energizer pulses, a 10,000 volt positive pulse goes around the series circuit and back to the energizer. The earth circuit has no current on it. It's just a loop circuit. If two wires are touched, it's going to pull the 10,000 volts down, letting the alarm go. And if the earth wire is cut, the alarm will go because it picks up a continuity circuit. But if someone is just to touch the earth wire, he will not actually receive a shock. It is just a ground earth wire. It's like touching the floor. With bipolar electric fencing though, we change this. We now have the energizer having a live out with a positive pulse on and a live out with a negative pulse on. So again, we have the same situation where we'll have 5,000 volts positive pulse and 5,000 volts negative pulse. This means that any human touching the fence trying to go through is going to get a 10,000 volt shock if he touches any two of the wires. But if he touches any one wire, he will still receive a 5,000 volt shock to ground, whether he's touching the positive pulsing or the negative pulsing fence. This is better for security purposes because you have the fear factor that if any wire is touched, it will shock you. There is still a ground earth on the system. And our recommendation is to always include one ground in your fence configuration. So that along the fence line, every 30 meters or so, you can put another ground earth in. This means that if a live wire is touched and just the one wire, the current will travel to that earth and back to the energizer, making sure that you've got a good ground earth along the fence as well. Problems that we often occur in electric fencing is arcing. This is when the voltage jumps across from a positive to a negative. I'm on an insulator, this might occur, I would say a steel post is behind there, a bit of salt or dirt gets there, and the voltage starts jumping across onto the negative post. For every thousand volts of electricity, we find we get a one millimeter jump. So when you have a 10,000 volt fence running, you have a gap of about one centimeter, or 10 millimeters, that the voltage can jump across, which we call an arc as it tries to jump to the negative, shorting out. 
So on a 10,000 volt fence, where we have 10,000 volts running and a zero, um, you have quite a high jumping distance of up to a centimeter. What's nice on a bipolar fence is because you've halved the voltage and you've only got 5,000 volts there and 5,000 volts there, you only have a five millimeter gap that the fence can jump. This is important in areas like coastal areas because in the coast with salt in the air, you have far more arcing and bipolar will reduce this. Advantages of bipolar fencing. One, every wire shocks. In bipolar fencing, there's a greater fear as every wire has current flowing through it so that making contact with any wire will cause a shock to ground and touching any two wires will cause a full voltage shock. On a conventional fence, every second wire is normally a ground wire and thus will not shock when touched. Two, every wire is monitored. Every wire has a pulse current flowing through it, meaning every wire can be monitored accurately for voltage drop and fence cut. Three, reduced arcing. Lower voltages per strand mean less chance of arcing, which can result in false alarms. This is ideal in coastal areas where the salt buildup can cause conventional energizers to easily false alarm as high voltages quickly create tracks in the insulators to arc over, shorting the fence out. Reduced radio frequency electromagnetic noise radiation. As a result of the lower voltage in each circuit and the opposing positive and negative pulses, there is less chance of conflicts with other signals in the area, meaning far less likelihood of interference on items like TVs and intercoms, which can sometimes have faint lines or produce a clicking sound when in the vicinity of a standard live earth high voltage electric fence. We hope you found this video helpful. If you would like more information, please visit our website. And for more videos, you can check out our YouTube channel.